Okay, on page eight of this web string and build, you have to do the exhaust cam lobe um, and the rocker arm. Also the the spring for the um, to keep the tension on the rocker arm, uh, the camshaft, which is only a piece of quarter inch drill rod, so uh, bolt, modified bolt, yeah. The one that's been worrying me the whole way along since I started this build is how I'm going to machine the, the lobe. I've watched uh, numerous, numerous videos on YouTube. Um, and as you all know, I'm only new to rotary table work. Um, I've watched Andrew Wales do his last one for the Hoglet engine with a boring head. Um, I just couldn't get me head around how we actually all these offsets as well um so i had a crack at it myself just trial and error the first one i done is out of aluminium and that looks pretty darn good it's pretty much smack right on the money um, I honestly didn't know how I was going to go making the next one out of steel, which I've decided to make it out of 4140, so I did it. There it is there. Still needs a bit of a clean up on the faces, a little bit of emery. But all in all, the only thing it does need is these top corners. My hands are filthy. Top corners here just falling off a touch. So I'm going to make one on camera just to, sh to show how I done it. Um, the blank starts off at 712 there, which I've got the blank here. Um, I've also turned the bung up, like a, 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 a yeah, bung, if you want to call it that, which is 562 thou in diameter. So if I can get that, it's a tight fit. It's a really good fit. So I'll show you the way I've marked marked them out, the way I was doing it. I'll show you that. That's where this comes into play, this little bung. And just a bit of old school ruler and scribe. Um, and then I'll put it on the rotary table and and um, show you that part. But man oh man. She certainly tested this. I've been worried, absolutely worried, shitless about doing this part. I didn't know how I was going to actually attack it, um, what way to attack it, how to actually do it. And, oh dear, that's in there tight. I'll try and get that out now. Uh, anyway, I'll get this out, mark it up, and I'll show you. I'm out of um, layout fluid, so sharp it is. Set on arc. It was 125,000 a side off. 
Okay, now put the bung in. Now I screw up around that. Try and get that bag out. Got the device behind the camera out. Right, it's out. Now, I'm going to put my ruler. This is old fashioned, rough as guts marking out. This is. So, all I do is line up where I put the mark on the outside lip and the um, scribe mark around the outer. That's all that bung. The other side. Okay, I don't know whether you're going to pick it up on the camera there or not. But you can see the scribe mark and the circle, and there's the other circle. So I've got to put in a rotary table. I take the one of the flanks off, then I use a rotary, then I go around. Sorry, take one flank off, then I go around, take the next one off, and then I put the radius on the back. So I've worked out what my offsets are, um, and what I've got to go to on the table. When I come around and intersect at the intersect when I put the radius on the back. So very, very crude way of doing it, but it works, eh? I've got an ER40 collet chuck in the rotary table of um let that go. I give you the shits. Um of Centered the right center of the rotary table to the spindle um, I've lightly clamped that in there now. I'm going to offset 281 thou which will put me on the edge of that outer radius with this pointer It's 100 200 80 One. If you wind that down, that should, yep, that's right on the edge. Now, what I'm going to do is set up an indicator on there so I can move the, the x axis, and I'm going to bring that scribe line, bring it in closer, whether you can pick it up there or not, but I'll get that scribe line, the one under that pointer there. You can pick it up running true with the x-axis and that's where I'll start from the rest will come clear in a moment so I've got to set this indicator up over here this is all probably double dutch and anyway it's going to work it's already worked twice so can't see why it won't work again it's the end result isn't it doesn't matter how you get it, as long as you get the end result. Right. So if I wind this x-axis. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's pretty darn good right there. Oh, I've done that by eye. It's a bit hard to show you guys. What I'm looking at there. You can see the scribe line there. I don't know whether the camera is picking it up or what, but I'll just touch it down and run it. see the scratch mark I put in here so that to me it's plenty good enough for what I want now where do I put that spanner on the floor 
make sure this is nipped up. Yep. Okay, now I'm going to change over to a 5mm carbide end mill. Um, I'm going to offset half the diameter of this cutter and then I'll bring this back. So I'm going to offset 98 and a half there, which is half the diameter of that cutter. Um, yep. Five, ninety-six, ninety-eight. D off. So in theory, if I put that down, that should be just on the edge, which it is. Now I've got to change the belt speed. <laughs> off there I'm going to set the indicator back over here on the other side okay so what I'll do now I've touched off I've zeroed the quill I'm going to sweep I've got to go down 185 thousandths at least that's the width of this part when it's finished so I'm going to go 200 thou deep so I'm going to sweep backwards and forwards going down to 200 thou I'm going to rotate the rotary table it's set at zero up now and with the other two that I've made, I rotate around to 125 degrees. Why that number? I don't know, but it works. I've got no idea why. Don't even ask why, because I've got no flaming idea. But that's what it works out to be. Um, and then I'll do the same on this flank. And then I'll start sweeping backwards and forwards, working my way down. And that'll put this in a radius on the back here. I hope I've explained it good enough so that's 200 down I've returned back to center so now what I'm going to do is rotate the rotary table around till I get to 125 degrees That's 200 thou deep. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit. I know for a fact this is a fraction oversize the top of this land, on top of the load. So I've, I can afford to take a little skim off here and do a climb cut and hopefully it'll clean up the outside a bit better and a bit less hand work. <laughs>
Yeah, it's how I got to make this. So I, that's what I. That's how I worked it out. Should I say? Uh, it's worked for me. Um, whether it's the proper way of doing it, I've got no bloody idea. But it's it worked. It looks like a lobe. The numbers line up, so I'm pretty stoked. So I'll take this out now, put it in the lathe, and part it off. And um, that's the lobe done. That's that's the part I've been worrying like hell over. I didn't know how the bloody hell I was going to build it, to be honest. I really didn't. Hours and hours of studying the internet, trying to find any sort of instructions and watching people, watching other guys make them. And um, I just couldn't get in my head how they were doing it. So I, this is how I nutted it out. Friggin' off. Okay, a little bit of a rub on some wet and dry. That's what we've ended up with. I've got to thank Aaron. Aaron from Aaron Engineering actually drew the actual drawings, or well, lacking a few of the dimensions that I thought I needed. And Aaron put it into his CAD program and Aaron redrew it up for me and sent it to me in an email. I had it on the iPad and um, I was just, yeah, taking a minute. So I've got to thank Aaron for doing that. Big help. Huge help. So, anyway, that's it. Move on. The stressful part is over. <laughs>